into the pieces of several popes and so to another popes who read the, the the gospel. We would stand for the gospel. Read the gospel. The gospel is going to St. Matthew chapter 16. At that time Jesus came into the quarters of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man is? For well, they said, Some John the Baptist, and others some Elias and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answering said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar because flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And to thee I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven, also in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, it shall also be loosed in heaven. Thus far the words of today's holy gospel. Well then, in the Father, Son, Lord, Lord, Amen. I'm here again in Benita, in Oregon. A few considerations on this that it matters who does things. And the fact is that God made it that made us a certain way, he gave us the right of private property, he gave us the right to have control of our own bodies, and that there's a certain hierarchy and a structure in the world. And so it matters if someone needs food, for instance, if you go into the store and you take ten loaves of bread and give it away. Well, that's a good thing if you're the owner of the store, and you're a thief if you're not the owner of the store. And so it is also with many things in life. For instance, in our present crisis in the church, God said, the Blessed Virgin Mary said, that in order to convert Russia, to bring an end to communism throughout the world, the Pope, he asked to, in union with all the bishops throughout the world, pray that uh, consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And so it matters who does and what does. It does matter. We see nowadays it doesn't matter since the, uh, many things, and in fact it does. And also what we do. Our Lord Jesus Christ told St. Peter, Peter said to our Lord, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And remember that Peter denied Christ three times. And then on the, a, a few days after the resurrection, 15 days after the resurrection, he saw Christ at the, at the, at the, uh, the side of the, the Lake of Galilee, the Sea of, of, of Galilee. And there he saw our Lord, and when he saw him, our Lord, as he said, Simon, son of John, do, do you love me? Dost thou love me? And he said, Yea, Lord, I know that I, I, you know that I love you. Yes, you know that I love you. Okay, if you, if, I love, if you love me, feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do, dost thou love me? Yes, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Feed my lambs. So each time, three times, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And so that we, it matters what we do, not only what we say, and also who does things. Because that, that, that it, and, and we also imitate those that are around us. So God made an order and he made a structure in society. And the, the head of the structure is the Holy Father. The head of the family is the Father. The head of the kingdom is the king or the president or, whoever, or whatever they call the head of the country in each country. The head of the company is the owner. And God made a structure in every part of society. And he wants those that are in charge to feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. And in our times, the hallmark of our times, one of the many hallmarks of our times, is those who have property use it only for themselves. Those who have money use it only for themselves. Those that have authority use it only to aggrandize themselves. That's one such example of that is a certain Mr. Donald Trump. Who is, who is a staunch pro-abortion guy, but then he found out that his base, his base that would elect him president was staunch anti-abortion. So he, he, he immediately gave up his pro-abortion stance and became anti-abortion. Good to be anti-abortion, but why is he anti-abortion? In order to follow his base. And this is actually the culture of our times. That people will do things only because of selfishness. But God said to St. Peter 2,000 years ago, he said, Peter, when you were in the garden, you were afraid for your life. A young girl said to you, 
Dost thou know him? And you cursed and swear that you did not know me. Another man asked you, Dost thou know him? And you cursed and swore you said you did not know the man. And finally a young girl said to you, Your own speech betrays you. You talk like one of the disciples. They're all Galileans. They talk with a southern accent. You can tell by the accent that you're one of them. You have their kind of speech. And another one said, Didn't I see you in the garden when you cut off the, head, the ear of Malchus? I know Malchus, and I was in the garden, and I saw you cut off his ear. I recognize you as one of his disciples. And why did Peter say, No, no, no? Because he wanted to protect his own skin. He said, I do not know the man. He lied. He spoke heresy. And he deceived others. Here is the head of the Holy Church, the one that said a year before uh, that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That same one that said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And our Lord said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of John, Simon bar Yonah, because flesh and blood have not revealed this to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And so our Lord told him, Blessed art thou, and now the same exact one is going to deny Christ to save his skin. Fifteen days after the resurrection. St. Peter firmly believes Christ rose from the dead. He has complete confidence in him. Now he, he really loves him. And he's very sorry for having denied Christ. When he's very sorry for denying Christ, he literally really loves Christ. But the Lord turns to him and says, Simon, I'm glad that you're sorry. I'm glad that you love me. But that's not good enough. Simon, son of John, Lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. All right? Feed my lambs. You realize in that garden, you could have saved souls. Instead, you tried to save yourself. And all that happened was, you saved nothing. Remember, before that garden, you heard me pray. The Lord Jesus Christ prayed in Gospel of St. John, chapter 17. Lord, I thank thee that I have not lost one. Not one of these 11 men is going to be harmed because of the prayer of Christ and because of the power of Christ. They did not save themselves. And when they ran away from the garden as cowards, they showed they were cowards, but they were not in the slightest bit of danger because Christ said they would not be harmed. He said, I go alone to this crucifixion. They could have stayed right next to him the whole time like St. John the Apostle eventually did. But it could have all been at the foot of the cross, and they would never have been harmed. They would never have been touched. No one would have done any harm to them, because Christ protected them. But they didn't believe, and they didn't understand, and they ran away as cowards. It was the power of Christ that saved Peter that night, and not himself. When he pulled out that sword and cut off the air of Malchus, they should have killed him immediately. Remember, those soldiers went into that garden ready for a fight. They were looking for someone to make any mistake, and they would kill them. And sure enough, St. Peter pulled out a sword, and he cut off the ear of Malchus, who was not very talented with the sword. And that meant what happened? They, they should have killed him immediately. But the eyes of Christ and the power of Christ's presence said, No, Peter, put up thy sword. You soldiers, you're here for me. Leave him alone. And all the soldiers stood still, and they did not strike Peter. And Peter stood still, and the whole crowd waited to see what Christ would do. He came over and picked up the ear of Malchus, and he healed the ear of Malchus. And then he told St. Peter, while all stood in silence and awe, wondering what he would do. Do you not know I could call 10,000 legions? I could call 10 legions of angels, and they could come and wipe out this mob. I go to this death because I choose it. This is what my work is. Now it comes 15 days after the resurrection. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to make St. Peter, alter Christus, another Christ. He's going to make St. Peter, who is going to carry his word and his spirit out into the world. Whenever he says, Peter, I'm going to ask you three times, not just once. Dost thou love me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Well, if you love me, then put it into action. Put it into work. You go and you feed my lambs and feed my lambs and feed my sheep. And so therefore our Lord said to him three times, feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. 
And then St. Peter turned. And what about our crisis in the world today? We're always the same. When the father is a drunkard, and the father is irresponsible, and the father is angry, and the father is violent, what happens? Well, we got a bad dad, but everyone else is okay. What's the problem? Turns out he's the head of the family, and therefore it harms everyone. And when the father does his duty, it helps everyone. So when the father turns away from the duty of God, he can never turn away by himself. And when the father turns back to God, he can never turn back by himself. His good, his actions will benefit the whole family, or his actions will harm the whole family. And that it matters what the father does. And hence, the Blessed Virgin Mary said over a hundred years ago, that there's a great crisis in the church, a great crisis in the world. And it is a crisis of a lack of faith and a lack of charity, a crisis of heresy and lies of communism, communist Russia, as she said over a hundred years ago, that will spread her errors throughout the entire world, a great cruelty and, and evil will spread through the world. What's going to happen? The time will come when the Father has to obey. We call the Holy Father, the Pope in Rome, the Holy Father. He is not called the Holy Father because he's personally holy. We hope that he is, but most of the time he's not. The present one certainly isn't. But the fact is that we have to pray for the Holy Father because he is a Father given to us by God who's supposed to feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. And right now the Holy Father is not doing that. Therefore, what was necessary for the children to do? And the Father is not doing his duty. The children must pray for the conversion of the Father. It was prayer of the Father to turn back to God. And the Father is going to have to feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. He did do what heaven asked last year by asking, by uniting with all the bishops to pray for the conversion of Russia. But he has everything else he's done is against God. And therefore, let's pray for his conversion. And also remember our Lord said to St. Peter in the Gospel of St. Luke on Holy Thursday night, Peter, I have prayed for thee. They will sift you as wheat. They're going to go after you, Peter. They're going to attack the bark of my church, and they're going to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, Peter. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. That's what our Lord said in the Gospel of St. Luke. When thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. We have to pray for the conversion of the Holy Father. Pray for the conversion of the fathers of families. Because a crisis in the church today, and the crisis of the world, is a crisis of priesthood. It's a crisis of the episcopacy. It's a crisis of the papacy. It's a crisis of the fathers of families and the fathers of nations. It's a crisis of men who do not love. There was a great abundance of sin in the world today because men do not love. And men are not pouring themselves out to feed the lambs, feed the lambs, and feed the sheep. And they're following the example of the Holy Father. Because the Holy Father is not feeding the lambs, and the Holy Father is not feeding the lambs, and the Holy Father is not feeding the sheep. And so therefore, in following his example, we find the heads of countries using their laws and their taxes and their government and their city and, and their, their soldiers and all the means they have to oppress their own people. And we find the fathers of families caring only for themselves. The modern man does not want to have the responsibility of children. He doesn't want to be taking care of children, a wife and children. He wants to go off and live a free life. He doesn't want to pour himself out for others. And the same is true in every level of manhood, from the top to the bottom. They are not pouring themselves out for their sheep. And what is happening? The sheep are being starved. The sheep are being abandoned. The sheep are being abused. And there is struggle everywhere in the world. Feed my lambs, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. That is what our Lord said to St. Peter three times on 15 days after the resurrection. And so it's necessary that we follow our Lord. And that we follow him, not only by saying, O oh Lord, I love thee, O oh Lord, I love thee, O oh Lord, thou knowest that I love thee, but rather by showing that love, by fulfilling our duty of feeding the lambs, feeding the lambs, and feeding the sheep. And in any case, we're closer to that. And God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.